We honor you, Heavenly Father, for this blessed and glorious day. We give you thanks. We give you praise. Father, as we rightly divide your word of truth, we, we declare that we are coming to the knowledge of truth, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Veils are falling off through the word of your grace in the name of Jesus. Eyes are being enlightened through the, your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Stories are being rewritten through your word in the name of Jesus. For many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the, the Lord delivers them all. Every affliction is being delivered right now through your teaching, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed and glorious day. And I thank you for everybody that is under the sound of my voice. And I declare and I decree, Lord, that we are what the word says we are. We have what the word says we have. And we can do what the word says we can do. And I declare, revelation knowledge is gifted to you in the name of Jesus. Revelation knowledge is gifted to you in the name of Jesus. Pastor Mtangwa, it is good to see you. Rose, oh, it is good to see you. God bless you. It is good to see you. It is good to see you. See, it is good to see you. Right. Like I said, I don't want to take much of your time. I want to get straight into it. I remember <clears throat> we started off, um, Jesus is enough. As we are preparing for the Jesus tour, oh, I'm excited. We are excited. Things are happening. You know, cities are, 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 are asking of us to be there, you know. So this 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 month we are in liverpool for the jesus tour oh god i'm excited of what god is doing he's raising his own he's raising his own remnant people that will preach the undiluted gospel people that will not compromise the gospel god is raising such and i'm glad to be part of it hannah piri it is good to see you god bless you praise god i'm excited right like i said i don't want to take much of your time we want to get straight into it oh lord gridia zuntele gishka barahata zandro skia doho shaliga barahate bereskia dohonta zumbra hasa lereskisha thank you jesus right let's get straight into it but before we get into it i want you to understand something that the message this message cannot be restricted haza this message cannot be restricted restricted the devil cannot stop it this message of Christ cannot be restricted. And I have news for the devil. The devil cannot stop it. Nothing is going to stop this message. Why? Because Christ is the gospel. Remember our title, Jesus is enough. Today I'm going to give you quite a lot of scripture because it is good for your spirit. And I encourage you to have your notebooks, notepads, Bibles. Make sure you have your Bibles. As I read, read with me. Don't just say, yeah, because you said it. Uh-uh. Read with me. So uh, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Right. Luke chapter 24. My goodness, I'm excited. I don't know about you, but hmm, today is going to be something else. Mari, it is good to see you. I believe South Africa is in the building. Let me allow me people to greet South Africa. They are in the building. Um, we love you so dearly. We thank God for that which you are doing. And I believe that the Jesus Store South Africa will start soon. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Rose, I know that the Jesus Store will start with you. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Just go out there. Preach Jesus. Kaza. Jesus is enough. I know South Africa, they are watching. They are gathered together. Maybe Kenny. Uh, hope uh, boy Tumelo. I know you guys are watching and I just want you to know we love you so much and we are so proud of that which you are doing praise God praise God hallelujah mm. right Luke 24 are you there with me Luke 24 Luke chapter 24 praise God make sure you've got your notebooks notepads Bibles wherever you write Wherever you write your notes, make sure you have those because today is going to be something else. Northern Cap. Yes, South Africa, Northern Cap is in the building as well. Praise God. I'm excited. South Africa, get ready. I'll be coming there soon. I'll, I'll let you know the dates. <laughs> we, are, we are going to preach the gospel of Christ together. Yeah. Luke 24 and verse 25. 
Right, so that you understand the pretext. This is Jesus on his way to Emmaus when he meets with his disciples. Um, and they were discussing about his death, his burial, and resurrection. But I want you to understand something that is very profound that many people don't seem to understand. Jesus, the disciples are discussing about the past event, which is the death, the burial, and the resurrection. As they are discussing that past event, watch this, they are discussing it with Jesus. So let me read this scripture. Bye-bye, Case. It is good to see you. Let me read this scripture, then we come to that point. There's something that I want you to understand. Oh, praise God. Now watch this. And then verse 25, then he says, oh, oh, And he said to them, Oh, foolish ones, and of slow of heart, like I've taught you before, that word foolish is not an insult. It was their state. Right? He said, And he said to them, Oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. So what was the message of this prophet? Ought not Christ... To have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. Now, let's go back to that Luke 24. I want you to see something right here. Jesus on his way to Emmaus. I'm about to push this thing because today I don't, I don't want to take much of your time. I'm just going to be boom, 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 boom. And whoo. remember the title is Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. Now, Jesus meets up with his disciples. They are discussing about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. But they are discussing about the death, the burial, and the resurrection to Jesus. That means a man or a woman can preach about Jesus and still not know Jesus. They are telling Jesus about Jesus. Zika. They are telling Jesus about Jesus. Say, have you not heard? Are you the only one that is new in the city? They are telling Jesus about Jesus. Let me make a declaration right about now. Many of you, there are certain things that you've been trusting God for. Like the man that was on the wayside crying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. And then he kept shouting, he kept shouting. But I want you to understand something. You can get to a point that you are frustrated with your situation to the extent that even when Jesus manifests himself, you will not even recognize him. Jesus is speaking to his disciples and they are speaking to him about Jesus. That are you the only one that is new in the city that has not heard about the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. Yet they are speaking to Jesus. That means you can preach about Jesus and still not know him. It's not because you have mentioned the name Jesus that people will say, oh yeah, he knows Jesus because you mentioned the name Jesus. Why? Because in the Bible it says there is another Jesus, another gospel that comes with another spirit. There is another Jesus. So you can preach about, oh Jesus is going to do this. Jesus, Jesus. Yet you still don't know him. Many people say, oh Jesus, Jesus, but they don't know him. But because of this Jesus talk that we are doing, we are reintroducing Jesus to the world. We are making Jesus famous again. Jesus, the one that died, buried, and rose on the third day. That is the Christ that we are preaching unto you. God that became man and dwelt amongst us. That is the Christ that we are preaching. The risen Lord, not the incarnate. Not Jesus of Nazareth, but the risen Lord. So the disciples are discussing about Jesus to Jesus. Was it not in the book of Revelations when he went to his church in Le 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 Laodicea? He went to his church in Laodicea. And the Bible says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Guess what? Jesus is knocking at the door. Wanting to enter into his own church. Yet the worshippers, the pastors, everybody is inside saying, oh, the presence of God is moving. Oh, Jesus is in this place. Yet Jesus is outside of the church. So what has happened is doctrines of men. They have, they have their own doctrines that have pushed Jesus out of his own church. He is by the door and they have put protocol, security guards, Ushers are blocking the door that Jesus, you will not enter. And he's still knocking at the door saying, I want to come in, but they will not allow him. Because for them, Jesus to them is it, but Jesus is him. That's why the Bible says, you shall 
Not the truth. The truth is not a, a say, saying a true statement. The truth is a person. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Meaning, many people are still in bondage right now. Yet they are calling on the name of Jesus. But guess what is happening? They have not found him of whom Moses and the prophets spoke about. Was it not Nathaniel? And Philip find it Nathaniel. And he said, we have found him of whom? Of whom? It's a whom, not an it. So Jesus can be in your, in, can manifest himself around you. But because you don't know him, you still below Jesus. Hence, this is why many people have pushed Jesus aside and have opted for bottles of oil have opted for souls, have opted for stones, and yet Jesus himself is saying, I am standing at your door and I'm knocking. I want to come in, and when I come in, I want to dine with you. But they will not allow him. Protocol was pushing him out. Ushers were pushing him out. The pastor is busy saying Jesus is in this place. The Spirit of God is moving, yet Jesus is outside. So on his way to Emmaus, his disciples were discussing about his death, his burial, and resurrection. And to an extent that they even said, are you the only one that is new in the city? That has not heard. Yet they are speaking to Jesus about Jesus. Look at verse 27. Praise God. God punished the devil. Verse 27. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in, the, in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Remember, the Bible is a Christocentric book with a Christocentric message and the theology of the Bible is soteriology, salvation. The Bible is about a person. The Bible is about a person. The Bible is not about how to make it. Ten steps to success. Ten steps to the next level. How to... Uh, the Bible is not about all that. Even though they were shadows that were used like the seed. Unless a seed falls, the seed this, the seed that. That seed is not talking about money. Again, is a person because the Bible is a book of a person. That's why the Bible says in the book of uh, John chapter 5, 39, you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, but the scriptures, they are there that testify of me. Meaning what? I am the reason of the scriptures. From Genesis to, 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 to Revelation, I am the reason of the scriptures. So he says, beginning at Moses and in all the prophets, and the Psalms, he began to expound to them the things concerning himself. Meaning that Moses lays a foundation, a doctrinal foundation. Moses. How do I know that? Beginning at Moses, every time you hear beginning at Moses, it's beginning at Genesis. Beginning at Moses and in all the prophets. He began to expound to them. That means Moses lays a doctrinal foundation because Jesus used the teaching of Moses. Now watch this. Galatians chapter 1. God punished the devil. Today, 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 you are going to thank God for yourself for tuning in. Now watch this. Galatians chapter 1 verse number 4. Galatians chapter 1 verse number 4. And who gave himself for us? For our sins to deliver us from the present evil age, according to the will of God and Father, to whom be the glory. He who he who he who delivered us. He delivered us. We're speaking of Jesus here because remember, Jesus is more than enough. Stay with me. For us to understand <clears throat> pretext, go back to verse number three. It says, To the churches of Gal Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of the Father. Right, watch this. He delivered us from our sins. How did this happen? Hence, this is why the, the, the disciples on his way to Emmaus were discussing. They thought Jesus died the death of a Mattia. A Mattia is a good guy, but he did not die the death of a Mattia. He died the death of a criminal. 
for our sins. It was substitutionary. Where you and I were meant to be crucified, Jesus took our place. Pay attention. I'm going somewhere. And delivered us from the present evil age according to the will of the Father. According to the will of the Father. Look at verse 6. Yeah, no, verse 5 to 6. To whom be the glory forever and ever. Verse number 6. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. You are turning to a different gospel, a pseudo gospel. Watch this. He says, He gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil according to the will of God. Question, what is the will of God? The will of God is that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. That is the will of the Father. That all men should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So verse 6 is saying, I'm now astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and turning to a different gospel. I am astonished that you are quickly deserting him who called you and you are turning to a different gospel. Now watch this. So that means there is a different gospel. That means there is a different gospel. That sounds like the gospel, but it is not the gospel. Let me give you an example of a different gospel. That sounds like a gospel, but it's not the gospel. How do I know the difference between gospels? The true gospel and the false gospel, the pseudo gospel, as gospel. How do I know? It's in the tenses. He has delivered us, past tense. He has blessed us, past tense. He has loved us, past tense. He has sanctified us, past tense. Pseudo gospel, that sounds like the gospel, but it is not the gospel. Is God is going to bless you. God is going to deliver you. God is going to sanctify you. God is going to redeem you. That's another gospel. It is within the tenses. The gospel of Christ, it is what Christ has already done. The finished work. So we preach the finished work now. Go to Galatians. Stay in Galatians there. Let me punish the, some devils for two minutes. Galatians chapter 3, verse 2 to 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 2 to 3. The Bible says, let me ask you only this. Did you receive the spirit by works or of, the, of works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Did you receive the spirit? Did you receive the spirit by sowing seeds? Did you receive the spirit by tapping into did you receive the spirit by prayer and fasting? You received the spirit. Watch this. Let me ask you this only one thing. Did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by hearing of faith? Verse number three. And it says, And are you so foolish, having begun by the spirit, and you are being perfected by the flesh. You began in the spirit. Now you are being perfected by the flesh. Meaning you began in the spirit. Now you are being perfected by shadows, symbols, oils, and all these things. There's nothing in those things. Now watch this. I want to show you something in the book of Hebrews. I'm going to preach the book of Hebrews in... In less than 20 minutes, the whole chapter of Hebrews, in less than 20 minutes. Is that possible? Yes. Remember, Jesus is enough. Okay. Are you ready for the book of Hebrews in 20 minutes? The whole chapter. Hebrews chapter 1 verse number 1. God punished the devil. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. Watch this. Are you ready for this? Hebrews, the book of Hebrews in 20 minutes. The whole book in 20. <laughs> Get ready. Pen and paper. This is very key, very important. Hebrews 20, 20. Uh, Hebrews uh, verse 1. Hebrews 1, 1. 
Long ago, at many times, in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. This is in sundry times. God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. Remember, Jesus is enough. He spoke to our fathers by the prophets. Which are the fathers? He was referring to the Jews. He spoke to our fathers. Because remember, the book of Hebrews was written to the Jews. Upcoming Jews and soon to be, to be Jews. The book of Hebrews. So God in sundry times, he spoke to our fathers by the prophets. Now watch this. I want to punish some devils right now. There is, as I'm preaching right about now, impartation is taking place. I know. Let me explain impartation for someone. Impartation is not me giving you anything. Impartation is me activating what is already in your inside. Impartation is activating. So I am activating what is in you already through the word of his grace. There is impartation that is taking place right now. Pay attention. Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, look at verse number 2. God punished the devil. But in, the last, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Not he will speak. God has already spoken to us by his son. Watch this. Whom he appointed heir of all things, through him also he created the world. Gee, God spoke in his son. So, watch this. So, we hear God. We hear God in Christ. Okay? We hear God where? In Christ. And where is Christ in your inside he resides in you remember in creation he is god in redemption he is the son in 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 regeneration he is the holy spirit so that he will come and reside in you he could not reside in you as the incarnate but he can only reside in you as the risen lord regeneration that's why he brought many sons so we only hear the voice of God in Christ because he has spoken in his son. He has spoken to his son in his son. Please stay with me. So we hear God. We hear God way in Christ. There is no place. Skaba. Redia sun telegeja. There is no other place that you will hear God except in Christ. Meaning, you don't need to go to some mountain somewhere to hear the voice of God or to hear God. You don't need to drink some oil. You don't need to drink some salt or some... You don't. Why? Because God has already spoken by his son. And the son is in your inside. As I'm speaking right now, the ability for you to hear the voice of God, it is in your inside. There is no mountain you can go to for you to hear the voice of God. In sundry times, God spoke to us by the prophets. But in these last days, he will not speak, but he has spoken to us by his son. So we hear God in Christ, not outside of Christ. Anytime you hear God outside of Christ is sorcery, witchcraft. These are diviners. Like the damsel in the book of Acts that could prophesy, pinpoint. So prophesying does not validate the presence of god so some the fact that somebody can prophesy it does not validate the presence of god because they can prophesy by sorcery they can be diviners 
We saw that in the book of Acts, that damsel that was prophesying, making lots of money for her masters. So for you to know that this prophecy is of diviners, there is a fee. You will be charged for one-on-one. -on -one. You are charged money. Those are diviners. Sorcerers. The damsel made so much money for her masters. So when I come to you and say, right, Rose, I need to speak to you. There is a word that God gave me, but you need to sow a seed. Just know diviners, sorcery. That's a pseudo gospel. Freely you have received. Freely give. This is where Simon Magus, the doctrine of Simon came about. When he saw the disciples laying hands and there was a manifestation of power, then he said, listen, I want to sow a seed. I want to tap into this anointing. And then the disciples said, you and your money, you perish. Do you think that the gifts of God are purchased by money? So anyone that charges you for prophecy, anyone that charges you for prayer, sorcerer, diviner, I don't care who it is. I don't care. So prophesying is not validation that the presence of God is there. Diviners can prophesy. Sorcerers can prophesy. What is the game changer? Is the message that is being preached. The Jesus that is being preached. Is it the risen Lord that is being preached? Or another gospel that is not another. That sounds like another. You got to be careful. Not everybody that is saying Jesus. Which Jesus are they speaking about? So if I say one-on-one, -on -one, sow a seed for one-on-one, -on -one, sorcerer, diviners. Listen, if, if the gifts of God are not purchased by money, why should I charge money for the gifts? You need healing. Sow a seed for your healing. Sow a seed that moves God. For God to heal you. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Those are diviners. Those are armed robbers wearing suits on pulpits. God punish the devil. I'm preparing for the Jesus talk. Like I said, the message of Christ cannot be distracted, cannot be restricted any longer. The devil cannot stop it. He cannot stop it. You are trusting God for healing. You need to sow a seed for healing because your, your seed will move God fraud that's fraud i know you don't like this preaching me too i don't like it so he has spoken to us he has spoken by his son so you can only hear god in christ there is no other place. Whether you are going to drink oil, whether you are going to sow seeds and all that. You can only hear God in Christ. Now pay attention. That's why the Bible says, My sheep, they hear my voice. So the sheep can hear the voice. Unless you are a goat. My sheep, they hear my voice. And the voice of a stranger, they will not. You need to see the man of God for one-on-one. -on -one. You need to sow a seed. You can't come to the man of God empty-handed. Sow a seed for the prophetic. Sow a seed for power. Sow a seed for this scum. How do I know? I've been there. I'm not a fly by night. I've been there. There's nothing there. So my sheep, they hear my voice unless you are a goat. So the writer of Hebrews, in Hebrews, right, let me push this thing. Like I said, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews in 20, 20 minutes, right? Kana, it is good to see you. God bless you. I told you, the book of Hebrews in 20 minutes, right? So that was just introduction. Now, let's go back to the book of Hebrews. So, the writer in Hebrews, in the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse number 1, the Bible declares that in sundry times God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, verse number 2, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son. So that means 
Chapter number one. God retires the prophets. Oh, I'm about to say something that is not going to sit well with you. In chapter one, God retires the prophets. He retires the prophets. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day of Jesus. These are not the days of Elijah. These are not the days of Jeremiah. These are not the days of Elisha. These are not the days of David. These are the days of Jesus Christ. He has spoken to us by his son, by his son. In the last days, in sundry times, he spoke to us by the prophets. He spoke to us by the prophets. So the prophetic is no longer exclusive. I'm about to push this thing. Oh, God punish the devil. The prophetic is no longer exclusive. In sundry times, he spoke to our, to, he spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. And the sun, where is the sun? The sun is in your inside. So in, in Hebrews chapter 1, God retires the prophets. So the prophetic is no longer exclusive. So don't, all oh, this, you need, you need a prophet. You need a prophet in your life. If you don't have a prophet, nothing moves. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Why? Because the Bible says that Joel declares, oh, God punish the devil. I'm pushing this thing now. Joel chapter 2 verse 28. The Bible says, In the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters, they shall prophesy. Who are the sons and the daughters? It is you that I'm speaking to. The Cam Jacksons, the Florences, the Roses, the Daisies, the Tims, the Yvonnes. You are the ones that Joel was prophesying about. Why? Because God removed, took the prophetic mandate. It's no longer exclusive. You need a prophet. You are a prophet. In the last days, my sons and daughters, they shall prophesy. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The canners, they will prophesy. The ability to prophesy is in your inside. Why? Because the same giver of the gifts, the Holy Spirit, resides in you. The giver of gifts. You have all the gifts of the Spirit in your inside. Why is it that they are not being manifested? It is because you have not read Philemon chapter 1, verse number 6. When Paul writes a letter to, to Philemon, he says, Let the sharing of your faith become effectual effective by acknowledging every good thing that is in you because you are in christ jesus so the prophetic is no longer exclusive i am a prophet i am this it is no longer exclusive because the prophetic mandate was removed in hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 removed the prophetic taken away because joel had prophesied that in the last days i shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and daughters who are the sons and daughters it is you what will you do you will prophesy you will pro you are the sons and daughters you are the ones that will prophesy so the question is what is the role then of the prophets of the now prophets oh god punish the devil the role of the now prophets is declared in the book of ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 12 that he said he gave some apostles some prophets some pastors some evangelists for what for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry so the role of the now prophet is to teach hey the role of the now prophet is to teach. Are we saying you will not prophesy? I we, we will still prophesy as much as you too can prophesy. But what we are saying is the prophetic is no longer exclusive. The prophetic is no longer exclusive. Can you still prophesy? Yes, you can still prophesy. Andrew, you can prophesy. Daisy, you can prophesy. Yvonne, you can prophesy. How do I know that? Joel 2, 28. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So all this, your business of, I need to go and hear from God. I need to go into that mountain. I need to go and see that prophet. There is nothing wrong in you going to see the prophet. But I want you to, to be rest assured that you are going to try and hear from God who resides in you. You are going with God to the mountain. You are going with God to the prophet. So imagine you are going to a prophet saying, can you tell me what God is saying? Can you tell me what God in me is saying to me? There is an error. God punish the devil. There is an error. The ability to prophesy is in your inside. The Holy Spirit, the giver of gifts, resides in your inside. So when a man comes to you and says, you want to hear the voice of God, you need to sow a seed. You need, there's an exchange. That's 
another gospel, pseudo gospel. Those are diviners, sorcerers. God punish the devil. The devil cannot stop this message. It's too late. God is raising a remnant. People that will preach the gospel as it is. People that will not compromise the gospel. And I'm glad that I am part and parcel of the remnant that God is raising in this generation. People that will stand on the truth. People that will preach the gospel undiluted. Yeah, you, there's a move of God. So you need to sow a seed. Ah, my big brother Herbert, it is good to see you, sir. You need to sow a big seed for God to move. That seed was never money. God punished the devil. So the role of the prophets in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 12 was the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. What is to equip? To teach them of what they already have in their inside. So this is, this is the reason why many people are still being deceived. Why? Because they, 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 they have taken the, surely God will do nothing unless he reveals it unto his servants, the prophets. What was being spoken of there? It is not that, oh yeah, I cannot go and start a business unless I hear what the prophet of God is saying. I cannot marry unless I hear what the prophet of God is saying. That is not what it meant. He said, surely God will do nothing unless he reveals it unto his servants, the prophet. What was it that God will not do? The plan for redemption. What was it that he had to reveal? Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? Beginning at Moses and in all the prophets, he began to expound to them the things concerning himself i'm just preparing for the jesus talk i'm coming to a city near you where you will see the undiluted power of god surely god will do nothing unless he reveals it unto his servants the prophets he's not talking about god will not allow you to marry because he has not revealed it to his prophet that's a lie 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 what he was referring to the plan for redemption Ought not Christ to have suffered? That is what he revealed to his servants, the prophets. In sundry times, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So what was being spoken, what was being communicated is not the now. Remember, God summons Abraham. Summons Moses says, bring the children up to me to the mountain. I want to speak to them. I want to speak to my children. I want to speak to my Timothys. I want to speak to my children. The children say, hey, we don't want. You go. Moses, go and speak to God. And come back and tell us what God is saying. That is where that doctrine started from. Said, I need a Moses. You don't need a Moses. Hebrews is telling you. That's why I say I'm preaching the book of Hebrews in, in 20 minutes. Hebrews chapter number 1 verse 1 and 2. He retires the prophets. So you don't need the Moses. You are better than Moses. Greater than Moses. Greater than Elijah is here. These are not the days of Elijah. These are not the days of Moses. These are the days of the sons of God. Oh, why we cry Abba Father. By the spirit of adoption. God punish the devil. So Hebrews chapter 2, God retires the angels. Ah. Hebrews chapter 2, he retires the angel. There was an, a, a, the worship of angels. Because remember, the law came by the angels. So he retires the angels. He retires the law. Chapter number 3, God retires Moses. Oh, God, pun I told you, I'm going to give you the book of Hebrews in 20 minutes. Chapter number one, he retires the prophets. Chapter number two, he retires the angels because there was angel worship. Chapter number three, he retires Moses. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 3. Watch this. God punished the devil. Hebrews 11. Uh, Hebrews 3. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Watch this. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant. Remember, Moses was a servant. You, you're not a servant. You are better than Moses. You are better than Elijah. So stop all this. I want the anointing of Elijah to come upon me. The spirit of Elijah to come upon me. You are better than Elijah. You are better than Moses. You are better than Jeremiah. You are better than Joel. You are better than Habakkuk. You are better than Esther. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant. You are not a servant. You are better than them, man. You are not a servant. You are a son by whom you cry, Abba, Father. You don't cry, Abba, Jaira. You cry, Abba, Father. Watch this. 
as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. As a son, Moses, a servant. So chapter number three, God retires Moses. Why? Because what was prophesied was, I want to come and reside in your inside. Boy, Tumel, boy, boy Kutso, it's good to see you. I want to come and reside in your inside. That means you are now the house of God. Know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Your body is a temple. Your body is the, is, is, is the reservoir of God's power, God's glory. You are, you, you, you tabernacle God. Moses was a servant. He was faithful in his house. But Christ, Kebo Shatayaman, who is not a servant but a son. So, chapter number three, he retires Moses. Why? Because you are God's house. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Kazo de Bigada. Chapter number four, he retires Joshua. This is the book. Remember the topic. Jesus is enough. Chapter number one, he retires the, the, the prophets. Chapter number two, he retires the angels because there was worship, worshiping of angels. Chapter number three, he retires Moses. Chapter number four, he retires Joshua. God punish the devil. Are you still here or you've just gone home? Hebrews chapter four. I told you, we're going to do the book of Hebrews in 20 minutes. Hebrews chapter number four, verse eight to ten. Chapter 4, he retires Joshua. Now watch this. Are you ready for this? God punish the devil. Today it's woto woto. Like what my father would say. Woto woto. <laughs> now watch this. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then they remained a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Watch this. Chapter 4, he retires Moses. Chapter 4, he retires Joshua. This is why Moses was not so worried about not going to Canaan. Because Canaan was not the promised land. Because if Canaan was the promised land, the place of rest, God would not have spoken of another, of another day. Hence, Moses was not concerned because Moses saw Christ. He knew that there was nothing in Canaan. That was not the promise. But the promise was the Sabbath. Rest, Christ was the promise. Canaan was not God's promise. Canaan was a shadow. Canaan was a type. Canaan was a pointer. Because if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day. Moses had already seen Christ, the rest. So the rest was not a day. Rest is not a Sabbath. It's not a day. It's not a Saturday. Rest is a person. Uh, you are not sure. Rest is a person. That person is Jesus Christ. How do I know? Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, <clears throat> verse 28 to 30. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and lean from, lean, lean from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest. For your souls you will find rest for your souls now look at matthew chapter 12 matthew chapter 12 verse number 8 matthew chapter 12 verse number 8 god punished the devil he went on from there and entered the synagogue and a man was there with him with a withered hand and they asked him is it lawful to heal on the sabbath so that they might accuse him he said to them which one of you who has a ship and if it falls in a pit on a Sabbath, we will not take hold of it and lift it out. Of, of how much more value is a man than a sheep? So it is awful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to them, stretch out your hand and, 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 and he healed him. This was on the Sabbath. And then he said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Pretext, verse number eight. For the son of man is the Lord of the Sabbath. The son of man is the Lord of the Sabbath. So Sabbath is not a day. Because if it had been a day, God would not have spoken of another day. 
So Moses is retired in chapter 3. Joshua is retired in chapter 4. Jesus is enough. You, when you have found Jesus, when you have found the truth, you have found rest. You have found liberty. Everything that was in Christ is in your inside. Oh, God punish the devil. So now in chapter 5, he retires Melchizedek. The priesthood. Melchizedek, remember, was a pointer. That's what the Bible says. After the order, after the order of Melchizedek, he retires him. Jesus, why did he retire Melchizedek? Because Jesus is the real Melchizedek. Now watch this. Hebrews chapter 6. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 6. Zibato Maradia. Hebrews chapter 6. What I'm about to read now might not settle well with a lot of people. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4. Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 4 to 6. Watch this. For it is impossible in the case of those who have once enlightened and who have tasted the heavenly gift, and have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tested the goodness of the word of God, and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God on to their own harm and holding him up to contempt. That there is the laguna of salvation. The Bible says it is impossible. It is impossible for you to crucify Christ again. Jesus will not die the second time. Meaning it is impossible for you to lose salvation. That day is the laguna for salvation. Right there. Right there. He said, it is impossible. Let's read it again. Let me read it slowly. Watch this. <clears throat> for it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tested the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance since they are crucifying once again the Son of God, which is impossible to crucify Jesus the second time. That means you cannot lose salvation. Chapter number 8, he retires the Old Testament. Chapter 8, he retires the Old Testament. Hebrews chapter 8, he retires the Old Testament. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13, God punished the devil. <laughs> now watch this. <clears throat> In speaking of new covenant, he makes the first one absolute and what is becoming absolute and growing old is ready to vanish away he is speaking of the old testament he retires it <laughs> it's in your bible guys it's absolutely in your bible it's actually written it's actually, if, that's why I say always read with your Bible with me. He says, in speaking of a new covenant, he makes the first one absolute. And what is becoming absolute and growing old is ready to vanish away. He retires the Old Testament. Now pay attention. Now pay attention. This is where many people might be confused. Let me remove that confusion. 
Okay? Because somebody said, so are you saying we should not read the Old Testament? Exactly. I knew you were going to ask that. So this is why I need your undivided attention now. Right. When he's talking about the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, or rather when he's talking about the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Old Testament are not books. The Old Covenant are not books. The new covenant are not books. Because you will see the old covenant in the new covenant and the old new covenant in the old covenant. Because Genesis is not Old Testament. You know that, right? You know that, right? Genesis is not Old Testament. Genesis is New Testament that was interrupted. That's why every time Jesus would speak... When he corrects Moses, it was not so in the beginning, meaning in Genesis. It was not so. They did this, it was not so. They did this, it was not so. Moses permitted you to divorce, but it was not so in the beginning, meaning in Genesis. Genesis is not Old Testament. Genesis is New Testament that was interrupted. Now, the New Covenant are not books the old covenant are not books now pay attention the old covenant is a relationship the new covenant is a relationship they are not books so the old covenant is a relationship based on works what i do for god to do I do this for God to do that. That was the relationship. Works. But the new covenant, again, remember, the new covenant is not books. Jesus says, this is my blood in the new covenant. My blood is not speaking of liquid. Speaking of a person in me. The relationship, relationship, relationship. So if there are relationships, so my new covenant is a relationship of grace. What Christ has done. Remember, when he says, come to me and I will give you rest, just like God rested from his works of creation. Why were we created on the day of rest so that we operate from rest? So, the new covenant is a covenant, a relationship based on grace, what Christ has done. What Christ has done for us, what we could not. Remember, in the Old Testament, they would uh, sacrifice animals for us. They would do this for us. They would do that. Is the animal that would be dying, killed, crucified, whatever, for our sins. So it was works what we do for God to do, even though God was not pleased with all that. So the new covenant is not books, is a relationship of grace, what Christ has done. The old covenant is a relationship of works. So in chapter 9, chapter 8, he retires the old covenant. And in chapter 10, he retires the law. We are not under the law. He retires the law. How do I know? Watch this. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 1 to 6. It's a bit of a read, but it's good for your spirit. For since the law was but a shadow. What is a shadow? You people went to school. Most of you went to uni and all that. What is a shadow? A shadow is a reflection of the original. Alright? 
Is that correct? A shadow. A shadow is not the real deal. A shadow is a point or a reflection. Okay? Now, stay with me. I had to say that because of what I'm about to say. For since the law was but a shadow of the good things, yes, a reflection of the object. Thank you. See this one that went to school. Me, I did not go to school to that level. But these ones, they went to school. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, I'm joking. Now someone said, ah, oh, so this pastor didn't go to school. I'm at school right now. As I'm as I'm ministering, I'm I'm still at school. I'm studying. I'm still studying. I'm acquiring so much. Studying. It's good to study. <laughs> it's good to study. For since the law was but a shadow, a shadow of what? Of good things to come, instead of the true form of these realities. It can never. If the Bible is yours. Underline that word, it can never. <laughs> this is the law. It can never. Ah. A shadow can never. By the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year, make perfect. A shadow cannot make perfect. Those who draw near. Otherwise, would they have not ceased to be offered? Since the worshippers having once been cleansed, would no longer have any consciousness of sin. But in these sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. Remember, they will be reminded every year to go and sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. As the law, it would not make them perfect. That means the Elijahs, the Moseses, they can only be perfect through us. <laughs> ah, God punished the devil. But in these sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. It's impossible. For the blood of goats and bulls to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and in sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. That means they were doing these sacrifices Killing animals and all that, but still God did not take pleasure in it. Because it was not God that even asked them to kill animals. Remember the, the remember Abraham was an idol worshipper. Abraham, idol worshipper. He is the one that used to do all these sacrifices and animal sacrifices. Abraham. How do I know that when God went to uh, the mountain of Abraham, there he saw him sacrificing animals. Hence, this is when God said, bring your Isaac. He knew that he understands about animal sacrifice. Now, stay there. You have taken no pleasure. God never took pleasure in the animals that were sacrificed. Never. Then I said, behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. As it is written. So the law and the shadows are retired. We are no longer under the law. They are retired. It's in your Bible. They are retired. Works retired. So you don't have to do anything for God to do. So if you still have that uh, sin consciousness, you need to be born again. Because it is the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus, that cleanses that, that takes that away. But the law, those continuously be conscious about their sins every year they are reminded they are reminded now watch this the shadows were taken look at hebrews 12 now hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 hebrews 12 verse number 2 
Watch this. So, the shadows were taken. Now watch this. This is when you hear people, they use shadows, symbols. Yeah? Let me explain this. They will say, take this holy water is symbolic of the spirit of god take this ribena drink it it's symbolic of whatever i don't know what they come up with take this anointing oil rub it you on your face rub it on your whatever apply it on your body it is symbolic of the anointing of god it's a shadow Yet a shadow was a reflection of the real. So why do I need a shadow when I have the real? So they would say that this oil becomes your faith booster. It sounds spiritual. But it's another gospel. Because that go... <laughs> okay, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. It might not sit well with you. I'm not going to apologize. I don't compromise the gospel. I preach it as it is. Are you ready to hear this? If you have oil in your house, that is not for cooking. But for anointing yourself and all that, just know this for a fact, for free. I'll tell you this for free. You are an idol worshiper. Question. With the oil that you have, the salts that you have, the holy water that you have in your house, and still you are not seeing change, do you know why? You have rejected Christ and opted for idol worship. You're an idol worshiper. I know you don't like it. Me too, I don't like it. That's why I don't do oils. I don't. You're an idol worshiper. You hear, so take this mantle, it becomes a faith booster. Faith booster. Now, I said that to say this. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. No, Hebrews chapter 12, sorry. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 2. Verse number 2. Look into... Listen... Jesus is enough. You want to see the manifestation of God. Forsake other gods. All these, your worship. Let me tell you something. Let me be honest with you. I was a senior of oils, salts, I remember I was sharing this last week that at one time my wife was not well, was not feeling well. My own sister, I asked her that, hey, I've got a problem here. She said, no, they don't worry. There is a man of God I know of. I don't mention names here. I'm not called to mention their names. There's too many names in the Bible. There's from Abraham to John. Hey, imagine the names Methuselah. Melchizedek, all these names, David, all these names are there for, for me to mention. I have no time to mention your, your pastor's names. <clears throat> now watch this. My wife was not well at one point. Uh, this is after we had uh, just, we were recovering from being homeless. Yeah, we had been homeless for a year. 
we were just recovering. So she was not well and all that. That time I was not well. I had a stroke and all this. Listen, I'm not a flyby. I know what I'm talking about. All this nonsense of these oils and all these, they don't work. They don't. I remember one time we wanted to a service. said, we don't have oil. What do we do? We went to the shop, bought oil, came back, said, this oil, we've been praying over it all night. It's a lie, 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 lie. I was a senior of these things. I know what I'm talking about. Don't think I'm a fly by night. Forget that. Leave that thing. Now watch this. My wife was not well. I asked my sister. I'm talking of my blood sister. She said, no, don't worry. There's a man of God. I know where he normally prays at this mountain. They went, she went there where the man normally prays. Took sand from where he prays. Took sand. Well dressed up, my sister. Took sand. Got in her car, put the sand in a bag and put it in her Gucci bag or whatever. Straight to DHL. Posted it. Send it over to me. Took the scent. Started praying. Oh God, thank you. Oh, as we take this scent where the man of God was standing on, my life would never change. Things became worse. Because now we are eating, we are drinking sand. It's now clogging our intestines, and you know. And I'm thinking, ha, ah, Lord, is this is is this all? This is now sand here, now drinking anointing oil here, cholesterol going up. And let me tell you, there is nothing in those holy waters and all this nonsense. It's just nonsense. Now. So, the oil is not a faith booster. The mantle is not a faith booster. It's not a faith booster. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 2. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Looking unto Jesus. So what is he saying? Look away from Moses. Look away from David. Look away from souls. Looking unto Jesus. The founder and the perfecter of our faith. Now, question. Where does faith come from? Romans chapter 10. You want to know where faith comes from? Romans chapter 10. Verse 17, God punished the devil. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans 10, 17, the Bible says, So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Faith does not come via oils. Faith does not come via sand. Faith does not come via mantles. Faith does not come via holy waters. Faith comes cometh by hearing the problem is you are too you have become doctrines of men has messed up many people you are too spiritual that everything has to be spiritual as in things are not working out oh there's a demon eh hey. Sometimes things are not working out. Sit down. Look at things around. Am I doing this right? Faith does not come by oils. Faith does not come by mantles. Faith does not come by holy water. Faith cometh by hearing. So as you are hearing, I am, I am providing faith through the word of his grace. Yeah, that's it. It's so too spiritual and not earthly good. That's it. You can't get a job. Yeah, the devil is fighting you. My mother in my village is fighting my business. My di Why don't you change the structure of your business? You are looking for a job. Have you looked at your CV? I remember I was, I was hearing a testimony of one man of God. 
uh, one man of God gave a testimony. I think it was, uh, I think it was Pastor Creflo Dollar. Yeah, that one I can mention. You know, I can mention him. <laughs> pastor Creflo Dollar mentioned this. You know, he's he's, he's, a, he's a pastor with a jet. Okay, so he had, he held an interview. And he said to these guys, listen, I want, I, I'm looking for a pilot. So the guy came, said, well, they came for the interview. They came for the interview. So now, um, so the interview now goes like this. So, yes, how are you, young man? Yes, I am Mr. Whatever. Oh, yeah, pilot. Yes, okay, I've got 20,000 hours of, of flight, whatever. Then he goes, I want you, there's something I want you to learn from, from, from uh, Creflo Dollar's testimony, all right? Now, he says, um, they came for an interview. He said, right, so now, okay, so you, are, you want a job as a pilot, you want to fly me? Okay, yes. He said, right, so now what happens is when we uh, are flying, or, and then we hear that uh, there's going to be turbulences, and the turbulences are going to be severe, um, what do you do? said, ah, oh, no, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. When we start hearing the turbulences, we just go, Rakoshakapataya, Rakoshkaya. And Creflo Dollar said, you are fired. You're fired. This does not need tongues. It needs knowledge. If there are turbulences, what do you do? You don't fly. If you are told that the weather is terrible, you don't fly. It is me that has to do the praying, not you. That's where the problem is. There's a problem. Everything spiritual. Spiritual, huh? You don't take your car for service, for starters. And then it starts jacking. You come out. You take anointing oil from Papa. With this anointing oil, oh, this car, the devil, you're a liar. This car will move. This car will move. Oh, right, whoa, 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 whoa. You pour oil on the car. Mechanic comes and says, excuse me, sir, what's the problem with your car? Say, it just stopped. The devil is a liar. And then the mechanic says, no, apparently it's, 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 it's just that it hasn't been serviced. So the plugs or, you know, they're not firing. So it's misfiring. That's, that's not need spiritual, that. You are busy. Others are studying for exams. You have an exam. Others are busy studying all night, burning candles, studying. You, you are busy. Reka Baba Soko. Yay! Father, yay, you hold your head. As I hold my head, with this anointing oil from my papa, as I hold my head, oh Lord, as I hold my head, I speak supernatural intelligence. Yay! Devil, you will not close my eyes. I will see answers. <laughs> you see what? You will go in that exam room, you will see Pepe. You will see nothing. Even with the scriptures, Paul writes to Timothy says, Study to show thyself approved. There is a, a study that has to be done a, to do your due diligence. You've got an exam tomorrow. You, you're not studying, you're busy. With the anointing from my father, as I take this salt, I put it under my tongue. Oga, <laughs> you go to that exam, you will see Pepe, you will be sweating. You are the only one sweating if the aircon is on. You are sweating. Don't spiritualize everything. Everything is a demon. Things are not working. My mother in my village. It's my village. My mother, it's my village. Everything. My auntie. And then these guys, they know that. Now they'll come and then they'll prophesy lie to you. Said, oh my God, my God, my God. I am seeing, oh, you're seeing nothing, say. I am seeing there is an altar in your village. You, they put your name on that altar. Mm, that altar is speaking. Ah, so there's an altar that is speaking. Yet this, the Bible says the, the, the blood of Jesus speaks better than the blood of Abel. Ah. So that means there is, there is an altar that speaks better than that altar. But you don't know it. And they know you don't know it. So they will ride on your ignorance. They will ride on your ignorance. Every, 
something spiritual. I was talking to, to someone. We were just talking. I was telling them that I'm, you know, I'm studying, I'm doing, um, I'm studying about traumas and trying to understand traumas and all that, you know. And then I realized certain people that I've spoken to, obviously because I'm, 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 I'm qualified now, did therapy and all that, you know. I realized some people were healed when I, when they spoke about it. But you, there's a demon. It's a demon. There's a demon. They are no demons. Sometimes, just relax. So you spiritualize them. So going back to Romans, I I still know what I'm doing. <laughs> Go back to Romans. Faith cometh by hearing. It does not come by oils. It does not come by mantles. It does not come by sowing a seed. Sow a seed of faith. To boost your faith, you need to sow a seed. There is nothing like that. It's fraud. I'm robbers. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word. So meaning, both faith and grace are given. Faith and grace are given. Faith and grace are given. So Paul puts it this way. I, I, I love Brother Paul. You know, I love Brother Paul. The day that I will meet with Paul, I, I want to ask him, but Paul, what really happened in Arabia? Because the time you came back from Arabia, hey, man. Paul puts it this way. I like, I like Brother Paul. Paul is something else. Philippians. Proziga. Philippians chapter 1 verse number 6. Philippians chapter 1 verse number 6. Yeah, Philippians chapter... Exactly. Jesus is enough. Thank you, Cam Jackson. Jesus is enough. Now watch this. Cecilia, it is good to see you. God bless you. Now watch this. Philippians chapter 1 verse number 6. The Bible... I love Paul. He says, I am sure of this, that ye who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. That scripture is not talking about ye that began a good thing, ye that began to build a house. <laughs> I've heard people use that scripture. Said, ye that began a good thing. He's not talking about you building a, a, a house, you building a this, you starting a job. You, you no, know, he's not talking about that. He's talking about salvation. <laughs> he that began the journey of salvation, he is the one that will sustain you. That's why he said, when you, you dash your foot, he will pick you up. He, the one that began the journey of salvation. He is the one that will sustain you. That scripture is not talking about he that began a good thing. He that began a good work in you. Oh, God is doing a good work. He's, 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 you're, you're starting a business. You're building a house. You're, you're getting married. All this. That is not what it means. Please, don't misinterpret scripture. Because if your interpretation is wrong, your worship will be wrong. That was referring to Salvation, that is it, until the day of Jesus Christ. Meaning the day when we shall be caught up with him. We shall be caught up with him. So going back to Hebrews, because I said I want to be, finish this, this Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 8. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 8, and then I close. I close. This is what I close with, all right? Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods. It is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods. When he's talking about foods, he's putting foods, oils, salts, grass, all that, which are not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. That's for another day. So, that is the book of Hebrews for you. So, Jesus is enough. Hebrews chapter number 1, he retires the prophets. Chapter number 2, he retires the law. Chapter number 3, he retires Moses. Chapter number 4, he retires Joshua. Chapter number 5 and 6, he retires Melchizedek. 
because he was a shadow. Then he retires the law. He retires the Old Testament, the New Covenant, and the New Old Covenant. And those are not books, they are relationships. So Jesus is more than enough. All you need is Christ. Remember, when Jesus went to, on his way to Emmaus, remember, he met the two disciples that were discussing about his death, his burial, and resurrection. They were talking to Jesus about Jesus. That means somebody can preach about Jesus and still not know him. My beloved, I beseech you by the message of God, by everything that you hold dear. Hear me and hear me well. Jesus is more than enough. You don't need to add to what Christ has already done. What Christ has done was perfect. That's why he sat at the right hand of his father. Why? Because he had finished. My beloved, I beseech you. I know at times you want, you want to feel spiritual. It's not a feeling. It's a knowing. Right now, if I tell you that the, you have the gifts of the spirit in your inside, the gifts of working of miracles, the gifts of healing, the gifts of interpretation, the gifts of tongues, the gifts of diverse tongues, you have them. The gifts of prophecy, you have them. Right now, you'll be like, but I don't feel it. It's not a feeling. It's a knowing. I beseech you by everything that you hold dear. Jesus is more than enough. When you have found him, you have found everything. When you have found Jesus, you have found knowledge. When you have found Jesus, you have found wisdom. When you have found, so the, the knowledge and the wisdom that God would give you is that same knowledge and wisdom that you can now apply in your day-to-day -day lives. The wisdom that you need to go and study. The wisdom that you need to, to, to apply this and this and that. The wisdom. When you have found him, Philip findeth Nathaniel and said, we have found him. Of whom? The law of Moses spoke about. The prophets spoke about. But you never hear the name of Jesus in the Old Testament. But it was in a shadow. A reflection of a good thing that was to come. We now have the reality. Jesus is our reality. When you have Jesus, you have everything. When you have Jesus, you have everything. When you have Jesus, you have... I beseech you, I beseech you, I beseech you, I beseech you. By the mercies of God. There is nothing in oils. There is nothing in salts. There is nothing in stones. There is nothing in grass or sand. I'm talking from a place of experience. I've been there. There is nothing. That's fraud. We are in a dispensation of the new covenant of grace, not of works. Don't be deceived by Simon Magus. Those that will say, sow a seed for the anointing. You want to tap into my anointing, you need to sow a seed. Those are divers, diviners. Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, the prophetic was taken away. The mandate was taken away from the prophets. It's no longer exclusive. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So the prophetic is no longer exclusive. How do I know? Joel 2, 28, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and daughters. That means you too have the ability to prophesy. But because you don't know that, you still be manipulated and deceived. When you have Jesus, you have everything. You don't need to add to what Christ has done. At times... Certain people that need to go through healing. You still have the word, but you still need education in that area. Don't spiritualize everything. Like I said, this pilot he went for an interview and he said, um, say, when we are hearing that there is going to, there's a storm, the weather is bad. He said, no, no, don't worry, we'll just pray in the spirit. Wisdom. Wisdom. Hey, Ash, it is good to see you, sir. I honor you. I love you so dearly. I love you, man. I love you. 
Father, I thank you for these that are right here with me. And I thank you, Lord, that their eyes have been enlightened. Veils are falling off. Veils are falling off. Veils are falling off. Hear me and I'll say this again for the last time. There's nothing in those oils. I remember one time we, we had said we want to have a conference. And said, oh, but uh, we don't have oil, Papa. What do we do? They said, I just go to the shop. They buy. We bought the oil, brought it back. And then we went. We, I was the one that would go and say, this anointing that is coming. My father is about to anoint you. I want you to understand he has been praying for this anointing for the last seven days. He never moved. He was in his. Uh, he went to the mountain. He was praying for this oil. Yet I would have just gone to the shop to buy that oil. Because we know you like oil. I beseech you. I beg you. There is nothing in those oils. It's just idol worship. That's why you see things are not moving. You are rejecting Christ. The same way the church in Laodicea, when Jesus said, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock." That is, not a, that, is not a, that is not for salvation. It was a real church where he went to and they would not allow him in the church because they had brought entertainers in the church, comedians in the entertainers. Simon Magusis, power conference, gifts transferring gift conference. No man can give you a gift. There is no man under the sun that can give you a gift. That's a lie from the pit of hell. No man can give you a gift. Gifts are given by the Holy Spirit. Not a man. When Paul was praying, said, Timothy, I come that I may impart on you gifts. He was not told, impartation is not giving you something. Impartation is like jumpstart. It's like activating what is already in your inside. Any man that says, I want to give you a gift... It better be a physical gift, not a spiritual gift. It's a lie from the pit of hell. It's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. And the next statement is you need to sow a seed. I beseech you by the message of God. There's nothing in there. If he's going to give you a gift, uh, let it be a literal a gift like buy me shoes, buy me a t-shirt, buy, buy, me, buy me this. Not a spiritual gift. Was it not Simon Magus? When he saw the gifts of God being made manifest when the disciples laid hands and he said, I will give you money for the gifts. And the Bible says, the disciple says, you will perish with your money. Do you think that the gifts of God are purchased by money? Anyone that says a gift, money, exchange, fraud, run for your life. There's nothing. I beseech you by the mercies of God. Jesus is fall in love with Jesus fall in love with him get to know him get to know him get to know him there's a song that I like the most falling in love with Jesus falling in love with Jesus falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever ever done yeah, yeah, yeah jesus is more than enough and i declare your eyes are opened all you will need is jesus and jesus alone and i declare you will never get it wrong with christ you will never get it wrong with christ whatever it is whatever it is that has been an issue in your life I declare the word of God over your life. When the Bible says, after you have suffered a little while, in any area that you have struggled, whether a little while or for a long time, the Bible says, I, the God of all grace, I will establish you. I will restore you. I will confirm you. I declare con restoration. In everything that you have lost, I res declare restoration. For everybody that had put their calling on the side, I declare restoration. Be restored. Pick up you're calling yet again. Now this time knowing that you have Jesus who resides in your inside. The author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible says they that look unto him are radiant. Their faces will never be covered with shame. And I declare you will never be covered with shame. You are blessed. 
you are loved and i love you so dearly my beloved i can't wait to hear you saying that you are getting ready for the jesus tour in your city just go out there preach the gospel of christ that is the will of the father that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of truth i love you so dearly and i pray for you and i pray that everything every of your endeavors in everything that you shall do it shall be prosperous it shall be prosperous in the mighty name of jesus by reason of the finished work by reason of his death his burial and his resurrection every form of sickness in your body i command it to be flushed out by the same spirit that raised jesus from the dead resides in your inside resides in your inside know ye not that your bodies are not your own but they are a temple of the holy ghost they are the temple of god so your body is a temple of god so if there is any sickness you have every right to go back to the owner of the body and tell him that god this is your body this is where the holy spirit resides let my body be invigorated rejuvenated and when you do that you are praying from a place of knowledge epignosis accurate precise comprehensive insight of what christ has already done everything that christ did he did it in your inside we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works we are created in christ for good so that means everything that was used to create you rose was found in christ that means what christ has you have what christ can do you can do that's why he said you shall do exploits reason why he said you will do exploit it is because he re now he resides in you he will speak through you he will heal through you you are blessed you are not cursed and i love you so dearly and i pray that in this season may you arise and shine for thy light is come salvation has come to your doorstep Go ye therefore and preach this gospel to all corners of the earth. Even when it means from house to house, go preach this gospel. Don't stop. Go preach the gospel. This is the mandate that we have, that it is the will of the Father that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. My beloved, I love you so dearly and I can't wait to see you and hear from you what God is already doing in your life. Be blessed. From me it is Shalom.